Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Samini Tinam Namaste Sarasate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sunnavadi Paschata Deshata Dine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitan Prabhu Nitananda Sri Adaita Gadadhara Sri Vashadi Gaura Bhakta Brinda Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nitananda Sri Adaita Gadadhara Sri Vashadi Gaura Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Rama Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Jaya 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 Prabhu Pada Guru Dev Guru Dev Guru Dev Jaya Jaya Guru Dev Jaya Jaya Guru Dev Guru Dev Guru Dev Jaya Jaya Guru Dev Nitai Gaur Hari Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol Nitai Gaur Hari Bol Nitai Gaur Hari Bol Hari Bol
Hari Ho Mithai Gora Hari Ho Hare Krishna, dear Prabhus and mothers. Thank you for joining this session of Wednesday Bhagavad Gita class. We are going to recite the <clears throat> a special mantra that uh, Narad Muni backing the result of that mantra to purify our consciousness so that we can see the Lord's presence through his words in Bhagavad Gita. So let us offer our Mangala Charan. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritam Naranchaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudirai Nasta Praesu Abhadresu Nittam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki Mukankaratiba Chalam Pangulanga Yati Giri Jatkripata Mahambande Si Guru Dinatarinam Paramananda Madhavam Si Chaitana Isharam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Simate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvise so Sunavadi Paschat Deshotarine Bancha Kalpat Ruvescha Kripa Sindhu Payevacha Patita Nam Pavone Bo Vaishnavi Bo Namo Namo Jai Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nitananda Sri Adaita Gadadhara Sivasadi Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, Prabhus and Mothers, last week we discussed, I hope you all remember. Of course, whole week passed by and a lot of other philosophy, other idea came in between. So, it's difficult sometimes to remember, but it is a common discussion amongst devotees. Why does Krishna take sides when he is equal to everyone? And I discussed that how Srila Prabhupada answered to his question when reporter asked him if he is equal to all his disciples. And I hope you remember that. Prabhupada said yes, but then he expressed that he is equal to all his disciples, but there are some disciples who take so much responsibility and it will appear like he is giving his more mercy to them. And it's true also. So both are correct. So we did discuss that why does Krishna take side when he's equal to everyone? I mean, practically we see he's fighting with the demigods uh, in the churning bill caution. We see that he tricked, deprived the demons from drinking. Uh, even somebody sneak out 
dressed as a demon, then he chopped up, chopped off the head of the Rahu and Ketu. So we we see, yes, it appears. So that's why that verse we discussed last Wednesday. That Samaham Sarva Bhuteshu. Samaham sar, sama aham, I am equal. I'm equal. And uh, I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I'm equal to all. But the second line, where is the focus? We have. We have focus that whoever renders service unto him, I'm talking about all of you, all the devotees who are rendering service to him. So then Lord Krishna says, anyone serves me in devotion is my friend, is in me, and I'm also friend to him. So yes, he's impartial, but at the same time, you can say Krishna does not play favorites. But Krishna has his favorites. It's nothing wrong. You know, a father loves, a, a gentleman loves all the children, but he loves his own child a little more. It's not anybody will find fault in him. Why are you loving your child more than you loving my child? I don't think anybody will accuse that. I, I, I'm sure you all will agree with that. So similarly, all the living entities are Krishna's part and parcel. And Krishna loves all of them. But those who surrender, like all of us, we are coming back to him. Then he loves like a prodigal son in Christian world. This famous story that when son was returning, father threw a special Hardy for welcoming him. And Krishna does. Krishna actually does throw a party to welcome each of us and he will meet each of us. And it will be a glorious entrance. And from there on, it's not like once you are in and everything is like static. No, no. Everything actually began dynamic. A concept with a joyful forever. Anandam Ambadi Vartana. This is the proof Mahaprabhu says. Anandam Ambadi Vartana. That ocean of nectar will increase more and more. So to play favorites means to bestow special favor on those whom Krishna likes while overlooking others. To, to play favorites can, uh, you know, connotes a you can say distasteful partiality. To favor it means to have personal preference. I mean, Bhagavad Gita is for everybody, but everybody will not understand Bhagavad Gita. Only those who are non envious. What do you, what do you mean, non envious? The beginning of this chapter, we, we discussed that. Non-envious means everything Krishna says we believe. And envious means they don't believe. They don't have faith. No faith is envy. They don't accept everything Krishna says. And as a result, asuddha dhana purusha dharma shasya parantapa aprattva maam nivartante mrittu sangsara bartmani they will loitering in this world. Birth, death, all these diseases like after life. And this is what Krishna says. So it is, ultimately it is individually not only Krishna or Prabhupada. Prabhupada and Krishna, they are always ready to accept and give us bhakti. It is individually us to accept that and embrace that and go on to serve. So this is very important. Also, in a few chapter back, I remember we read that, yes, everyone is equal in God's eyes. 
But Krishna is not equal in everyone's eyes. Durjadam didn't see him same way Pandavas saw him. So when we approach Krishna, we have a concern. And I'm sure all of you thought about it. Does Krishna care equally for everyone? Or whoever does better bhakti, loves them more, maybe doesn't like me as much. <laughs> Krishna's benevolence towards even the demonia is seen in Mahabharata. And I repeated that past times of Srila Prabhupada's commentary. Srila Prabhupada gave a beautiful commentary on Durjodhan's um, fell down or you can say he left this body. Um, Krishna, Lord Krishna was not happy. Bhagavan Krishna was not happy. Now, did Krishna try his level best to make him devotee? Yes. Even before the death, they had a conversation, Lord Krishna and Durjadam. Marto jada dekta samasta karma nivedita atma vichikirti shita. Uh, nivedita, nivedita atma vichikirti shita me. Durjadam. Ask Krishna, if you are God, why you are favoring the Pandavas? And Lord Krishna answered, I came so many times with different proposal to you. Every time you deny and ignore my suggestion. But these Pandavas, they have given up their life, everything for my pleasure. And Krishna actually revealed, I am the Supreme God. I own everything you see around. It is all mine. So, Pandavas deserve to rule this kingdom, not you. Now, if he's putting a logic question, and Krishna gave the logic answer, did it change his heart? No. Nope. So that's why it is very difficult. It is ultimately it's a choice. Of course, it's a choice. We have free will. Uh, of course, it's not a big you know, choice. I mean, you are still, even if you are under Maya, still under Krishna. Krishna's Maya is under. Uh, it's not like you can exist separately from Krishna. No. But Krishna is constantly trying. Prabhupada made one lecture. He said, Suridam Sarvabhutanam. He's always looking how to benefit each soul. But we carry so many impressions of self-interest. We don't see that our ultimate interest is actually Krishna's interest. If we can some or other align with Krishna's interest, we'll be more happier than. Ultimately, why do we even exist? If you ask what purpose drives your life, if you ask all these questions, you will come to the same point. You want to experience that loved and offered love. Yes, this is what Krishna made for. Anandamaya Bhash. Of course, that's Krishna, but we are part of him. Jiva Sukhanishi. So this, if we can some or other align with Krishna's uh, role, then Krishna's uh, desire, then we'll be happy. Okay, so we are going to start text 30. This is a, this chapter, every text is like so important. Who would like to read? Anyone from the audience? Like to read text 30, chapter 9? Okay. Prabhu, I'll be glad to. Okay, Ajit Prabhu, go for it. Uh, chapter 9, text 30. Apichet su sudacharo 
you know durachar like in hindi they say durachar badmas <laughs> okay durachar okay yeah bhajati so, ma ananya bhak sadhur evasa mantavya samya vya vyasito hisa word by word api even chet if su su duracha one committing the most abominable action, Bhajate is engaged in devotional service. Mam unto me, Ananya Bhak, without deviation. Sadhu, a saint. Eva, certainly. Sa, he. Mantavya, is to be considered. Samya, completely. Vya, Vasita, situated in determination. He certainly saw he. Even if one commits the most abominable action, if he is engaged in devo devotional service, he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated in his determination. Purport. The word sadhurachaya used in this verse is very significant and we should understand it properly. When a living entity is conditioned, he has two kinds of activities. One is conditional and the other one is constitutional. As for protecting the body or abiding by the rules of society and state, certainly there are different activities, even for the devotees, in connection with the conditional life, and such activities are called conditional. Besides these, the living entity who is fully conscious of his spiritual nature and is engaged in Krishna consciousness or the devotional service of the Lord has activities which are called transcendental. Such activities are performed in his constitutional position and they are technically called devotional service. <clears throat> now in the conditional state, sometimes devotional service and the conditional service is in relation to the body will parallel one another. But then again, sometimes these, con these activities become opposed to one another. As far as possible, a devotee is very cautious so that he does not do anything that could disrupt his wholesome condition. He knows that perfection in his activities depends on his progressive realization of Krishna consciousness. Sometimes, however, it may be seen that a person in Krishna conscious commits some act which may be taken as most abominable socially or politically, but such a temporary fall down does not disqualify him. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that if a person falls down, but is wholeheartedly engaged in the transcendental service of the Supreme Lord, the Lord, being situated within his heart, purifies him and excuses him from that abomination. The material contamination is so strong that even a yogi fully engaged in the service of the Lord sometimes become ensnared. But Krishna consciousness is so strong that such an occasional fall down is at once rectified. Therefore, the process of de devotional service is always a success. No one should uh, deride a devotee for some accidental fall down from the ideal path. For, as explained in the next verse, such occasional fa fall down will be stopped in due course as soon as the devotee is completely situated in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, a person who is situated in Krishna consciousness and is engaged with determination in the process of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, should be considered to be transcendental, should be in the, should be considered to be in the transcendental position even if by chance or accident he is found to have fallen. <clears throat> the one, the words, sadhur eva, he is saintly, are very emphatic. They are, they are warning to the non-devotee that because of an accident fall down, a devotee should not be derided. He should still be considered saintly, even if he has accidentally fallen down. <clears throat> and the word, Mantavya is still more emphatic. 
If one does not follow this rule and deride the devotee for his accidental fall down, then one is disobeying the order of the Supreme Lord. The only disqualification, the only qualification of a devotee is to be unflinchingly and exclusively engaged in devotional service. In the Narsimha Purana, the following statement is given. Bhagwati cha harav ananya cheta bharsha malino api virajate manushya nahi shasha kalusha chapi kadachi timira parabhavatam apayati chandra the meaning is that even if one fully engaged in devotional service of the Lord is sometimes found engaged in abominable activities, these activities should be considered to be like the spots that resemble the marks of a rabbit on the moon. Such spots do not become an impediment to the diffusion of moonlight. Similarly, the accidental fall down of a devotee from the path of saintly character does not make him abominable. <clears throat> On the other hand, one should not mis misunderstand that a devotee's transcendental situation service can act in all kinds of abominable ways. This verse only refers to an accident due to the strong power of material connection. Devotional service is more or less a declaration of war against the illusory energy. As long as one is not strong enough to fight the illusory energy, there may be accidental fall down. But when one is strong enough, he is no longer subjected to such fall downs. As previously explained, no one should take advantage of this verse and commit nonsense and think that he is still a devotee. If he does not improve his character, character by devotional service, then it is to be understood that he is not a high devotee. Hare Krishna. That's a very interesting last two lines. Yeah. No one should take advantage of this verse and commit nonsense and think that he is still a devotee. So in other words, what do you understand, Ajit Prabhu? Let me hear from you first. Yes, uh, what I understand is like accidental fall, fall down are acceptable, but intentionally doing that, taking cover behind this verse and doing... Uh, things that we know to be wrong that are not prescribed in the Shastra is not right. You cannot do that. Mm. Accidental fall down can be. Okay, good. Anybody else? Yes, Mother Sankari Devi. Hare Krishna to everybody. I think I'm better audible now. So Hare Krishna Prabhu, uh, I was just thinking that uh, Krishna is so merciful. Uh, this is what we are here. This is what we heard in the last um, verse also where we were talking about the partiality aspect of Krishna. So he is very merciful. Once he sees that a soul is very sincere to reach him and he's making that effort and in that effort because of the deep conditioning that the soul may have, if a, a slight slip is there, that's not a good reason for Krishna to abandon that soul one more. I mean, to abandon that soul. I mean, Krishna never abandons us. So it just it just brings out his more merciful aspect that, okay, he understands that we've been in, into this condition for so long, uh, an accidental slip may happen, but that, that Krishna is ready to ignore that as long as we remain sincere in, in, in our endeavor. That's my understanding. That's, that's very good. That's good. Very well said. Yes, I agree. Very good. Yeah. yeah. No, you both. Both are very nice. Two point. Anyone else? Because this is something you will face in life. May not be in your life. Uh, hopefully not in your life. <laughs> but even if you do, uh, or if you see in another devotee's life, how to keep our perspective very pure, not judgmental or sentimental?
This is a beautiful verse. In 11th Kento, second chapter, 35 text, there is another verse similar. Jan astaya naro rajan na pramadeta karhichit. That's right. No pramadeta karhichit. Dhavam nimilla vanetre na skalena na patetiha. Once somebody perform devotional, start performing devotional service, will never blunder on his path in this world. Now, when it says dhavan nimilla vanetre, means you keep your eyes close, you will not trip or fall. Doesn't mean like, okay, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, I'm doing seva now every day uh, to the my house, all the member in my family are devotees, so this is Krishna's house. Okay, I can now close my eye and walk, I will not fall in a ditch, not in a physical sense. When you read that verse, don't take it as a physical sense. Krishna did not say you to sit in a driver's seat. He said, I am now performing pure devotion. I can close my eye and drive. No, that's not what that verse meant. I mean, literally, you could say that. It says dhavan. Dhavan means you're going. Nimillava netre. Your eyes close, you can literally go. But that's not what it meant. It means, means even if there is some mistake happen while performing, you know, devotional service, we will not deviate and go away from bhakti. We'll be reinstated. As long we have this um, responsibility of correcting ourselves when we see something I did wrong and I apologize and I regret, I want to correct myself. That responsibility, when awakened, Krishna will protect us. I mentioned this before in Bible. It says that the difference between devil and the saint. So Jesus replied, the both can fall, even the saint. But one who gets up and keep going, it's called saint. And devil, when he falls, he stay fallen. So, of course, I'm not trying to scare someone. Okay, somebody fell down and uh, is not gave up Krishna consciousness or something like that. Yes, that fallen stage is not, Krishna does not recommend. In South India, when Prabhupada was there, in Andhra, and um, in the morning he was giving class and all the Brahmanas, you know, South Indian Brahmanas, they're very pakka in their rituals, in their morning duties. So, <laughs> some or other Prabhupada made a very interesting point. He says, of course, he didn't have any, any Indian disciple at that time uh, in, in that group. It's all Western boys and girls from America. And Prabhupada says, these Western boys and girls, they are sadhu according to Krishna. And Prabhupada quote this verse. You may see, then Prabhupada, uh, hinted what those Brahmanas do. So he said, you may, you may did your rituals in the morning, worshipping all these demigod, Ganesh ji, this, that, and you, you went on. And then now you have come here. But this, you may see them not doing any of those things that you do. You may say like, they're fallen. They're not like doing unique on time, you know, chanting, uh, purifying 
yeah, their body all the time. But they have a one thing clear. They are chanting and trying to serve Krishna under their Guru's guidance. And according to Krishna, as long they are strict on their bow to chant and um, follow their Guru's instruction, they are considered saintly, sadhus. Prabhupada made it very clear. Of course, we are not against the Vedic follower. You know, I was thinking about it a lot. But still, the Brahmanas or, or any religious person, they should give importance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's exclusive merciful uh, facility that just by chanting Hare Krishna right now for 10,000 years, you can literally destroy anything and everything that imposed on you by the material nature. You can literally come out clean and nobody should judge you. Even you going through like, you know, tumbling, like a tripping, you know, falling here, there, you know, some bad idea coming. Of course, our Acharya also, I mean, Prabhupada himself said that you're not responsible for the bad thoughts, but you are responsible for bad thoughts, dominance. Because in order for a bad thought to dominate, like one devotee said in one time in the class, I won't say the name, uh, the devotee, no, it's not here in the Zoom. We have 20 people, but she's is, is not there. But that devotee says, I wanted to just check my Facebook before I go to sleep for 10 minutes and that's all. And I opened the Facebook for 10 minutes. It was eight o'clock and I want to go to sleep by nine o'clock so I can get up and wake up the deity and for Mang before Mangal Arati. But Pran Govinda Prabhu, finally I, I'm done with the Facebook and I see it's at 12.30. I don't know how it became. So many hours went by and I have no idea, no control. I tried to control a few times. I'm failing, failing, failing. Well, you cannot blame anybody for that. It is your responsibility. But it happened. It happens. I mean, the person is here in, in our community lives. But I'm, I, I mentioned that I'm glad you came uh, forward and expressed that you have a weakness in spiritual um, regulation, how to discipline your... So in that case, you literally have to take little extra step like increasing chanting a little more, inner strength to have that conviction. You know, we'll, first of all, we are Satchit Ananda. Yes, we are minute in scale, but still, minute of infinite, what is that means? It's also, when you're connected, you can be empowered. Look at Prabhupada. He's also individual soul. Just like you and us, we all are. But because of his connection, you can get tremendous power. Krishna can empower you to preach. So similarly, when we think of our constitutional positions, okay, we are minute, one ten thousand teeth of hair. But in connection with Krishna, Brahmanda Tarite Shakti Dhare Jane Jane, this verse given that to deliver the entire universe, one soul, one pure soul can actually drown the whole universe into ecstasy of Krishna. Of course, Krishna has to sanction and Krishna has to empower that devotee. So that's the point. So we have to consider many things. Now, let's, th there is few verses Prabhupada gave in order to make his um, statement very interesting. I personally request all of you to focus on the second line in the purport that Ajit Prabhu just read. Prabhupada said, when living entity is conditioned, he has two kinds of activities. One is conditional 
and other is constitutional. We should focus on that, what Prabhupada's saying here. Your life goes on a like a two track of train. Two track of train means both has to go on. You are born with material needs because this body we got, we need we have to have a material needs. That's called born on. You have a uh, material needs in a, in, in the least um, uncomplicated, I would say, <laughs> and uh, least uncomplicated and uh, harmonious lifestyle according to your psychophysical nature. Now, if you say, I have no idea what are you talking. What I'm talking that we all have some affinity, some desire to explore while we are practicing. We have this body, we have material desire. Uh, and if you don't have, you are already liberated. Great. But I'm talking about those who are struggling uh, that uh, I want to be pure devotee. And after a few hours, he said, to be nice to have a little vacation to Hawaii, just to... Okay, we should be very serious, chanting 64 rounds. Well, maybe we can go to the beach. I mean, we have a tug of war, like goes back and forth, back and forth. Be realistic. We are born with a particular nature, psychophysical nature. Krishna said this very clearly. 1860, Krishna told to Arjuna, you will be compelled to act. Wow, that's very scary. He said, you, are, you will be compelled to act what nature you are born with. If you look at 18.60, Krishna says, now you may not hear due to your illusion, but you will be compelled to act. What does that mean? Arjuna will fight. So Prabhupada makes a very clear distinction. Whether he will fight for Krishna or he will fight for Krishna's Maya. There is no third choice. Choice means either we serve Krishna or we will serve Krishna's Maya. Why well, don't you want to serve Maya? Because it doesn't sound like a good idea. No, but you have a material desire. That's why the society, Krishna created this Barnashram. That where your material needs will be harmonized if you can identify your nature. Some of the, some, sometimes devotees say, I don't even know what is my nature. So, no, no, you know, you just don't know how to identify so take advantage of senior devotee and sit down and reveal one day, two hours, what you did your whole life. Here, there, what you did. Don't pretend. Tell straight, very straight. Like you have an attraction for making money, like I had, and I it's lost. Now I see that it's completely gone. Uh, of course, by the mercy of Vaishnavas, and of course, my endeavor also, not just the mercy. The combination of endeavor. Uh, but there was a time when in the beginning of my brahmachari life, I was like desperate to make money. I don't know why. I was like craving, strong desire to make money. Now it was, of course, as a brahmachari, it was artificial. But still, I opened a studio in Mayapur. It was the first uh, studio that we uh, take people's photo and... Uh, we send them, you know, develop and send them because nobody's allowed to take photo with the deity. Anyway, so the point was that I reflect everything Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita is so fact, it's so true. If we cannot see sometime, take advantage of senior devotee, they will explain particular words, how to see. It. So the point is that we have a material needs, at least uncomplicated you know, uncomplicated and harmonious way. Purify what is your psychophysical nature. So that's one. Second is, 
Because fall down means what? Psychophysical nature. You cannot suppress the feeling. Uh -uh. It will pop. <laughs> Only thing we can do, replace. Replace with higher taste. But if I cannot, if I don't know how, then one day it will pop. I hope it get purified before you depart from this world. And the second is, ashram is for the soul, not for the body, I mean, conditioned life. Uh, ashram for the soul is a time-wise, I would say, ashram provides time-wise um, spiritual progress to your uh, to be more specific to your uh, commitment, spiritual commitment. I made a commitment that I will chant 60 nouns. You better keep it. But still my mind is disturbed. Increase the chanting. Believe me, Prabhu and Mother, it works. If a rascal like me can be, you know, get out of that, anybody can get out. It works for sure. But don't stick to the 16 nouns. It may not. Prabhupada did say. That's why he always said minimum. <laughs> Means certain number, according to disease, the medicine is required. It's not just one pill for everybody. If my condition is serious, then you have to increase your chanting and hearing. And you'll see, you'll get out of it. It's so beautiful. But problem is we don't let it go. We are holding it. I like it. I like the taste of ice cream. I like the taste of relationship. I like the taste of this, that, making money. Whatever. You know, like you like it, you like it, you like it, you like it. But it's, it's blocking our highest, higher happiness. So therefore, there has to be uh, philosophically understanding. First thing we do, philosophically understand, grasp it, try to grasp it. Make it relevant to your life, relevant to your level of understanding. If I, if I cannot understand certain things, ask a senior devotee, please, can you make a relevant level of consciousness where I can relate what is why I'm feeling like this, why I'm going through like this. Not everybody can grasp immediately. So that's very important. Because once you grasp through philosophy, Bhagavad Gita, then you will be able to live a wonderful devotee life practically. Before you live practically, everybody wants practically. I want to have a perfect life now. No, no. Live by philosophically. Chanting 16 now, whatever the philosophy, why we don't follow, why we follow for regulatory principle. You see pros and cons. If I don't follow what happened, you know, like this, like very details. So when we live our life philosophically, that will push us to live spiritual life practically. And then what will happen? You'll become pure devotee very soon. It's called spontaneous. So philosophically, then practically, then spontaneously. But everybody think, I want practically now. No, it's, it's not going to happen. And if you're just not interested to increase your devotion and hearing, it will take a long time. It does. Sometimes looks like, like, I don't feel attraction to hear about Krishna. Well, that stage is called condition, diseased. We have to just open our heart and let Krishna enter. And he purifies. This is required. So, let's go a little bit of what uh, this verse actually talking. I made a little note today that Bhaktivinu Thakur gives a big, well, maybe we'll do next week, a uh, big um, concept about um, in Harinam Chintamani, 
what bothers or why sometimes seen that a practitioner, sadhaka, uh, fell down. And he gives a whole logic. Uh, but it's a little longer than what I thought. So I'm going to just discuss the bars a few more minutes and then if anybody has any question or comment, you can raise your hand always. Uh, you, you are welcome to do that. So let's see. Apichetu sudra acharo bhajate imamanandabak. Now, this is a very interesting. Are we holding others to an unrealistically high standard? In our society, when we think of fall down, questions should be asked. Uh, am I holding? Are you holding? Well, that Maharaj or that Mataji or that Prabhu supposed to be pure devotee. How is that he or she fell down? Well, are you holding to an unrealistically high standard? That's the question I have. Suppose uh, I, I explain this a little more. A many devotees Chaitanya Chan Prabhu, many devotees talks. Uh, this verse, everybody talks. Prabhupada talks so much about this verse. Many lectures he gives. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur spoke about it. Many devotees. Suppose someone we know does something so shocking that we feel, I don't want anything to do with such a horrible person. <laughs> While our shock is understandable, our assessment may be unfair. Why? Because sometimes, brothers and mothers, even good people act out of character. Even a good people. I'm sure if you'd meet Bilamungal Thakur, you're like, how dare he did this? I thought he was a liberated soul, but then he was, uh, he didn't care even his parents, uh, I mean, not parents, father's uh, funeral, final rite, funeral rite, what they call Shraddha. He's telling the Brahmana, can you finish it quick? I need to go somewhere. Brahmanas are saying, excuse me, we are doing this for your father's, departed father's. Uh, ultimate need, Saddha ceremony, we're chanting the mantras, we're taking a little time. No, I want you to do quick. Now, why he wants them to do quick? So he can go to the prostitute house. Now, some of us will think, oh, that's a horrible thing to think on your father's, uh, you know, funerals, Saddha ceremony. You think like this, what a horrible person he is. Be very careful. Yes, it appears like that. But, you know, in the same life, that how he turned around and he became so advanced, even he got the direct blessing of Radha Krishna, that Mahaprabhu wanted to hear what he, Bila Mangal Thakur said. So many examples like this, like if I was there, how would I see that? Oh my God, I don't want to see his face. I probably would say like that. I may not say in public, but in my mind. So sometimes even good people act out of character. How people act is, in, is not determined only by their values and purposes. Of course, which compromise, you know, uh, sorry, comprise uh, the essence of their character, you can say. It is also determined by their conditions and conditionings which may cause them to sometimes act out of character. Now, you may object. 
Won't a truly principled person never act out of character? Never! Maybe too strong word, never. The world can subject people to such extreme condition or conditioning that we cannot even imagine. Haven't we all done these things we are not proud of? I don't know about you all, but I did. Certain thing probably I would never do. How horrible. So during high pressure moment, haven't our weakness got the better of us? If someone judges us solely by our worst action, when I was, anyway, I'm saying in public, it doesn't matter. When I was a little kid, I was so addicted to the lodgings. Lodgings is like a candy in my village. We had a one shop, corner shop. And I was so addicted to lodgings. I even stole two lodgings because the lodgings uh, bottle in the shop was open. So I just took two and put in my pocket. And when I was confronted, I deny and ran back to home. Of course, my parents came to know <laughs> from the shop. All but I still think like, wow, what an addiction I had. Like I was so desperate to steal it. It didn't even bother. I mean, I don't remember everything details what my mind was thinking. If we don't want others to hold us to an unrealistically high standard, are we fair in holding them to such a standard? I'm just asking a simple question. Even Krishna himself does not hold people to that standard, Prabhu's and Mother. Krishna does not. You look at Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Arjuna's brother, Bhima, who came as a Patanayak, Gopinath Patanayak, he was doing some illegal activities, spending money for girls and gambling and this, that. Oh, they are eternal associate, uh, pure devotee. Yes, they are. So Mahaprabhu didn't want to get this. That's also true. But Mahaprabhu ultimately protected. Now, if you would hear, if you, I mean, you can read Gopinath Patanayak's life. Wow, horrible. How he spend the money that he collect the tax instead of giving to the king, he just spend the money for girls and the gambling. And it's just like another Kormi. Be very careful, Prabhus and Mothers. Be very careful. <laughs> he's a Gopinath Pattana, he's a Bhima, one of the Pandava, pure devotee, Mahabhagavat. But their activity to teach us sometimes, Krishna arranged that too. Krishna declares that even if people do something grievous, they are to be considered well situated if, I am saying it boldly, if they are striving to live virtuously. That is the point in this verse. Specifically by being steadily devoted to him. Their devotional connection will gradually reform them. That's why Krishna. And next verse, when we come, well, we'll, we'll probably next week we'll see. So life is tough, and we all are wounded, just in different ways. We need to be each other's comrades, not each other critics, Prabhus and Mother. We want to be comrades. Help each other, not criticize each other. By being considerate and compassionate, we can help each other. Put our worst behind and manifest our best. That is required. So those who do bad things aren't necessarily bad people. Focus on their overall action, not their occasional deviation. Okay, thank you so much, all of you to join. We have just on time finished. Looking forward to see you all next Wednesday.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Bancha Kalpaturu Veshikipas in the Vaibucha. Patitanam Pavanipo Vaishnavipo Namo.